your code base might be cursed. There's a bunch of things that I see way too often in code bases from junior developers to big companies with lots of principal staff level engineers. If you're doing any of these things, I highly recommend you stop ASAP. You'll be amazed at how much it helps, even if you think the way you're doing things right now is better. First thing, talked about this a bit before, pre-commit hooks incredibly cursed. I have had this argument so many times, and every time I do, it ends up being something along the lines of, but CI is hard. I don't care. The server is where you validate if code is correct or not, not on the user's device. If you want to make it easier for a developer to know if things are good or not locally, you can write tools and scripts to help them do that and load up the readme with those things, but blocking every time they make a commit? Nonsense. Git is a tool for developers to use on their machines, and Git is also a method to organize changes once they push them up to the rest of the team. But the way Git is used on a developer's machine is up to them, and you should let them do it how they want. Pre-commit hooks take that agency away from your developers because you're too cheap to set up CI. Cut the shit, set up some CI. Curse number two, committing your secrets and environment variables. I can't believe this is still a thing, Funny enough, I actually saw this recommended in the Next.js docs, which is incredibly, incredibly cursed. Please, please do not commit your environment variables and your secrets. There are so many better ways to put those up. Just Google search environment variables Vercel or environment variables GitHub, and you'll find plenty of things to help you do that. But please, 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 please do not commit those files. That is very bad practice. Thing number three, not subscribing to Theo. Seriously, less than half of y'all are subbed. What the hell? Subscriptions are free. Hit that button. It's right there. Real talk though. Thing number three is code coverage requirements. Why are you still blocking pull requests on the amount of tests written? Real quick story from when I was at Twitch. I would rewrite features pretty often because they needed to be. They were either they were deep in an old class component hell, we were overhauling them, adding new stuff, I was playing with a new library, whatever reason, I would rewrite things pretty often. But man, man, oh man, how do I put it? The problem I ran into was when I rewrote a feature, even though the new feature I added was well tested and over the code coverage line, I couldn't deprecate the old feature because the code coverage line was 90%, the old feature was 100%, and when I deleted it, it deleted so much code that wasn't being used anymore, but was still well tested, that it moved the whole code base below the code coverage line. And as a result, we left tens of thousands of lines of unused code in the code base in order to maintain an arbitrary goal. This is bad. I shouldn't have to explain to you why this is bad. When you set code coverage goals, you encourage this type of bad shit. Don't do it. Code coverage in every circumstance is bad. You can make some arguments for 100% because that's not affected here, but I would be hard to convince with those arguments too. Please, seriously, do not set code coverage goals. On the topic of blocking for dumb reasons, thing number four is blocking for dumb reasons. Yes, tests are one of them, but generally speaking, anything that keeps a developer from getting feedback on their machine when they make a change as fast as possible is bad. Y'all know me, I'm a huge TypeScript fan. I shill it on pretty much every one of my videos, but you should not prevent your developers from seeing the results of their changes because they're not type safe. You can block unsafe code at merge time with CI. Do not block a developer on their machine from seeing if code works or not, even if there's a red squiggly line because the red squiggly line is the thing TypeScript gives you. It's not a breaking error inside of your browser that keeps you from actually seeing if the code itself works. Type safety, TypeScript, ESLint, import rules, all of these things are great to have in your code base. They should not block me from seeing my changes. And ideally, you run those things separate from your uh, like test environment build process. So if you have a pull request that will automatically generate a preview build, that shouldn't require that the code is type safe either or following ESLint rules. Check your linting, check your type safety, and check your unit tests and whatever else before you merge, but do not block developers on those things while they are iterating. I'm not saying deploy code that is unsafe. I am saying allow developers to develop the ways that they want to. And if your code base prescribes ways that I do things on my machine, 
I probably am going to quit soon. And that is the most important thing to take away from these cursed things in your code base, is if you are in control of these things and you're not fixing them, you are going to lose good developers because the best developers don't sit around and tolerate these things. They come hang out on my YouTube channel and then they get better jobs. So for the sake of job retention and for the sake of the mental health of your engineers, please lift these curses from your code base, seriously. And if for some reason you still haven't subscribed even after the call out earlier, why not? Subscriptions are free. The button's right there, or maybe there. I don't exactly know where it goes here. And you're probably now seeing a recommended video around here. YouTube thinks you're gonna like it for some reason. I trust them, that's why I'm here. So you should give that a watch. Thank you for this one, really appreciate it.